Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Unfiltered Gamer. Uh, this time up on the chopping block, we have another top five video. Um, today, here with me, we have Katie Chenderlin, and she is going to be giving us her top five favorite board games. Um, just a quick a little discussion here. What what kind of went through your mind when you thought of this making this list for top the top five list? Um, I picked stuff based on what I enjoyed the most and the playability and uh, how many times you could replay games. Uh, some games I feel like you can only play a couple times and then they get boring. Uh, but these games I feel like you can play more than once and they're still fun. And they're fun um, and easy to teach people too. So. Yeah, I would agree from what I saw. It, it seems like these games are all pretty, pretty nice on the replay meter. Um, have you played more like most of these games a couple times? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would imagine it's your top five favorite games. All right. Well, I guess we can go ahead and get started. Um, what's your What's your number five? What's your fifth favorite game? So number five is Sushi Go. Sushi Go. So I just made a little video on this one already, talking about great gift games for family, um, and this one definitely falls in that category. It's made by Game Right, and I think it's two to four players. The game's about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, I would say so. Um, it's pretty quick. <laughs> Basically, from what I discussed earlier in another video, we'll just kind of summarize it really quick, because you guys have already probably had enough of this game. Um, sushi, drafting game. Take a card, pass it, pass the hand of cards along, and then eventually you start making little sets and pairs, and whoever has the most points uh, wins the game at the end. Um, so, what what did you enjoy about the game the most? It's definitely replayable. I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, also, I own this game too, and it's I think really easy to teach people. Um, I taught my family, a lot of the older people in my family too, and they picked it up really easily. Um, and it's just really fun to play. Um, it's really good for party games, and I just really enjoy it. Um, it's just a really good like party game, and it's a lot of fun to teach people and just to have on hand for a really quick game. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I think, yeah, two to five players, sorry. Um, actually, when I first saw this game, my, my fiance brought it over um, from her work. She was um, explaining how good the game was, and I can't believe I've never never even heard of the game before. I had hundreds of games at this point, and I still never heard of Sushi Go, and she's like, you gotta try this game out. Uh, this game, and um, oh, what's the other one? You're, you're, you're running away from the, uh, you're trying to get go into the cave and get as many jewels and stuff as you can, and then you're trying to escape. There's another one of those games, similar, it's in this small style game. Oh, where you enter, or you leave. Yeah, yeah, and you have to leave. <sighs> It's, it's, it's killing me. I can't remember. <laughs> it's okay though. Um, but yeah, good game. I like it. I, it definitely has a lot of replayability. Um, I fully agree. I think it is definitely a great gift idea game. When, when, when did you get it? Um, I got it in our annual gift exchange. <laughs> yeah, I never saw that one. I would have probably <laughs> snagged it otherwise. All right, great. So Sushi goes in number five. Yes. Uh, number four would be Mysterium. Ooh, Mysterium. So Mysterium is by what? Liber Liberal Liber Ferald, I guess? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. something like that. And two to seven player game. It's a cooperative game. Um I, I kind of refer to this game as the Dixit um clue kind of game. It's a little bit of clue, a little bit of Dixit. You get that imagination with the whole cards. Um basically you um you get a whole bunch of people that are um investigators I suppose and then you've got a ghost and the ghost player is with the investigators but he can't speak he or she can't speak and the only way that they can kind of communicate is by playing these cards similar to Dixit you will receive a certain amount of cards and with those cards you will then judge on who your specific murder sus suspect was what weapon they used and where they were at right yeah so I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it works um, it's a lot more difficult, too, than you would expect. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Some of the cards do not align with the, uh, the character. So if you have a character that is supposed to go with you, you know, so if you're a black character and black character has the, uh, has like the doctor, you know, and maybe I'm the ghost and I'm trying to give you a card to say, hey, this is the doctor, um, th you're the doctor, this is the card that's going to reference that. Um, maybe it could be another character that has something. Yeah, that the line. card could be blue, and the doctor might be blue, but there also might be a gardener that's also blue. It's kind of kind of funky. Uh, yeah, it's pretty difficult. 
Um, and not only that, but you have a certain amount of turns to beat the game. Yeah, and if one person loses, then everybody loses. <laughs> yeah, if you don't, if you don't get everybody to guess get, to get to the end before having to actually guess who the real murderer was, then you 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 lose. Yeah. But it's fun. It's like a co-op game, and so it's like not everybody's fighting against each other. You're all trying to do it together. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I it was funny because when I first saw this game out, I didn't hear a lot of uh, reviews for it. But once I once I like picked it up at the, the the board game store and I was reading it, I said, "Oh, this game is kind of interesting. It's like Dixit, and my fiance really likes Dixit. Dixit is right up her alley." And my friend's like, "No, that game looks like it's gonna be horrible, horrible." And I kept fighting it over and over again, like I said, whether or not I was gonna get the game because honestly, it was pretty expensive price tag, and I didn't uh, I didn't know about Kings of the Comics at the time, so. Um, I almost passed, but luckily I didn't. I still picked it up, and we played it that night, and it was uh, pretty fun, right? It was, yeah, very enjoyable, and it's different based on who's the ghost, too. Yeah, the the, the play is kind of different if I was the ghost mm-hmm. compared to you because of what the cards we would play to help. Yeah, because then we would you were the ghost so many times that we started to understand like what you would do. <laughs> yeah, so if you have the same character playing as the ghost multiple, multiple times, you kind of get an understanding of how they play the cards and what they're trying to represent by playing those specific cards. Which is cool because they have an expansion this game actually just came out. Really? Uh, you get it. It's cool, <laughs> but it's pretty much just more cards and stuff. There's no actually oh. addition to the, the gameplay, but... More cards is still good. In fact, mm-hmm. uh, a tip actually from Mysterium is you can use Dixit cards with Mysterium. We should try that. <laughs> you could do that. that, that I've, been, I've been hearing about that a lot on the board game geek. Um, so yeah, uh, Mysterium number four, huh? Yeah, Solid. definitely. Definitely one of my favorite. One of my favorite co-op games. So what's what's next? Okay. Um, number three is Captain Sonar. Captain Sonar, another game I just discussed not too long ago in another one of my reviews. What do you think about this one? Uh, I really enjoy it. Um, it's another uh, kind of co-op game, but then you fight another team. Uh, I really like it because you have to work together, then you have to listen to the other team, and you have it's just really like kind of clustery. But I really enjoy like the um, the challenge behind it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Basically, you got the little border here. In fact, we're using the little border as our hideaway for the top five for top five games. Um, which is in the game, and you basically border off the table, and you got one team and the other team. If you want to actually understand how the full game works, you can go on to my, my review for Captain Sonar somewhere around here. Um, go ahead and check that out. But as for just the game itself, it's a, you know, a, a multiplayer battle scenario. Best with eight players, four on four, I would Definitely. agree, right? The more yeah. players, the better. We played with four, and then we played with eight, and it was way more fun with eight. <laughs> it's just so much more going on, and everybody has their own role to play, and it's so important to like to deal with um, each and every role specifically to, to aid the ship, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely, and it's so fun because everybody has their own role, and it's just so much fun to see everybody do their own job, and when everything works together so well. <laughs> it does. It actually does. I don't think there's anything like... There's no debilitating problems with this game other than the less amount of players you have, the more it's not going to be worth taking out, I think. Yeah, it gets really difficult. Could you picture two players? Oh <laughs> really? my god, that would be too hard. You can you have four roles. Oh, it does say two. It that does, yeah. It's, it's, no it's going play, to be a two-player game. I, don't don't play it two players, honestly, for, for your own sake. I mean, if you want to really challenge yourself, I guess. If you're going to play it two players, though, you got to play it real time. Because you can play it real time or you can play it turn based. What do you think? Turn based or real time? Real time, but I think I would have a panic attack. <laughs> real time is where it's at. So what? what ca- number three, Captain Captain Sonar. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, Matagot, Matagot Games, great game. Pick it up. Uh, number two. Uh, okay. That is Splendor. I love this game. Splendor. Me and your fiance play this all the time. <laughs> Splendor is a pretty good game. So Splendor, what, is basically a strategy game. Yeah, you have to uh, get jewels and then uh, get more cards with the jewels, and then all of a sudden it's like you won the game. Um, but it, it's anyone's game um, up until that point. But I love it. I love strategy games. I'm not the best at them, but I'm getting better. <laughs> so the idea of Splendor, basically, for those who haven't played it, is it's, it's, a, kinda got, it's got some poker chips in it and it's got a lot of cards. And on your turn, you can either choose to get some chips 
or pick a card up and a wild chip. Now you spend the chips on the cards, and the cards give you bonuses, and the bonuses actually represent the chips. So you have like red and black and green and blue chips, and those each represent colors to, of, of cash, basically. And you can spend blue chips to buy blue cards, or um, a variety of chips to buy a specific card, and that specific card might give you a blue diamond. Well, that blue diamond represents a permanent chip on your side of the board, and so you start collecting, and as you start collecting, you gain more points, and each card has a certain point value on it. Some of them are zero points, mm -hmm. and some of them are really high. I've actually never collected a card that was more than like four or five points. Yeah, but except for like the end cards that if are... You can maybe get yeah. one, right? So that's cool, though. But yeah, and there's, there's some other little variations. You can get, you can collect little characters and stuff like that. And it, interesting game for sure. Um, I personally, I like this game a lot, actually. I'm not a big strategy fan when it comes to like simple solitaire strategy games. It's not really solitaire because you can play with multiple players, but it does have that feel kind of, right? That I think so, yeah. Solitaire kind of feel to it. Solitaire is more like a solitary game, though. <laughs> well, yeah. Solitaire. <laughs> but it has that, you know, it has that... Um, I don't know, it's, it, the strategy feels kind of like one of those games where kind you of, could play yeah. it with a computer, right? You could play this game with a computer if you mm -hmm. wanted to. I do see that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to. I feel but... <laughs> like, if, and if they make an app for this game, I'll never play because I'd never win. Mm -mm. I'm, not a very, I'm not very good at this game, to be honest. I like it. It's, it's... I think it's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so, so Splendor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number two. Dose. Ni. So then number one is Five Tribes. Five tribes. Oh, by the way, Splendor. Um, what is this? What does it say? Golden Geek and Mark Andre, I believe. Yeah. Just want to give a little. <laughs> I forgot about that. But yes, five tribes. The Jins of Nakwala, right? Made by Days of Wonder. What is it? Two to five players. Yeah. Two to five. No, players. two to two to four. Two to four players. Okay, two to four players. So what's 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 five tribes about? It's kind of like Moncala. Um, and you pick up these uh, little pieces and you put them along the board and then uh, you also get to collect genies that can help you or gins, whatever. Um, and it's however many points you get at the end, uh, that's the person who wins. I just really enjoy it. It's another strategy game. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. definitely a um, game. So a lot of times I don't win, but I just really enjoy playing them. <laughs> um, I just think uh, the pieces are really cute. It's a lot of fun. Um, I just, I really enjoy it. <laughs> so, once again, Five Tribes, if you've never heard of it before, which most of you probably have, um, basically it's a Moncala strategy style game. And that's kind of weird to say, but it's, there's not very many games uh, like Moncala out there, and this is, this is one of them. You get a big board, you got a bunch of little, little squares, you place uh, a couple meeples on the, each of the squares, and basically on your turn you'll pick up the meeples on one square and then you'll drop, 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 and at the end of the, your drop session, whatever it lands on, you take all that specific colored meeple, so if you did white, you'd pick up the white ones, if you did green, you pick up the green, and then you would do an ability on the square, and what would those be? Like, you could put a palm tree on that square to gain more points, um, if you can remove all the yeah. meeples. Um, then, like, uh, if you put white down, um, then if you, like, put that on the white space, then I know you get the genie, because that's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, you can get, you can get genies by buying them, specifically, if, if, when you drop your last meeple on a specific, uh, cardboard uh, little yeah. square, you can, you can buy genies, basically. Um, you could put, like, uh, little castles on them and that makes it a, a worth spot more points worth, yeah. just like just like the uh, the palm trees but the genies mm -hmm. actually give you a special ability maybe it's um whenever you walk on whenever somebody walks on one of your specifically owned squares you'll get some points or, or there's like slaves and workers and yeah you can there's cards in the game you can pick up to get more points there's tons of ways to get points um the game is beautiful honestly it's very 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 lively and colorful and it's pretty easy to teach people. Oh, it's very too. easy. It looks like there's a lot to it, though. But there's really, really not. It takes just a couple minutes. Um, like it's really easy just for them to start learning. It, everybody knows how to play Moncala. So. Yeah, the basic idea of the game is pretty simple. There is a lot of little things in the game, though. You got to know about all the different meeples, and you got to know about you know mm -hmm. what every space does, and then you got to look up every genie. Like you're not going to remember every genie what they do, but luckily there's a nice little. No, nice everybody's little... got a little um, card in front of them. Okay, yeah, everybody's got card. one, so. right? <laughs> and so you can kind of just look at you know, this is what the genie does. Do I mm -hmm. want this genie? If I want to purchase it, I do. And in the, in the game, basically, whoever has the most points wins. Mm -hmm. There's a bidding system too for whoever gets to go first. So you can kind of bid oh, more. Yeah. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. bid three, four, five, a certain amount of or zero. Um, 
Mm. Which I, we found out bidding more kind of screws you over. Yeah, you end. need those <laughs> points. So it's sometimes you might want to go first, but you got to really make sure. And I think it, it really it's the more strategically minded you are, you know, the more yeah. strategy well, it's you a strategy can. Strategy game. Right. <laughs> so you have a higher likelihood of, of doing better the more you play too. So if you mm -hmm. play this game three or four times and you bring somebody else in. You, know, you just gotta go easier. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to. You could, well, you could definitely I mean, stomp them. <laughs> yeah, you could. But that's how they learn, right? That's how they, that's how they get better. These games. No. No. You can just play differently. Well, I suppose so. <laughs> but anyway, these are your uh, top five yes, games. These then. are my favorites. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I'm yeah. sure I'll see you again sometime of course. soon. <laughs> Great. Well, I hope you liked uh, this uh, top five, Katie's top five board games, at least for, for now. For now. Until I'm I, sure it'll change. Until we find <laughs> some, some better ones. All right, guys, I will catch you next time. Bye. See you later.